at the very beginning of my career as a writer, I kept thinking like, oh, you know, it'd be it'd be so great if I could just do something like a conventional science fiction novel or something. That's Dr. Jordan Abel, an author from Vancouver who teaches Indigenous literatures and research creation at the University of Alberta. And honestly, show me a writer who hasn't dreamt of creating works like Octavia Butler or Kurt Vonnegut before. Like that that would be that'd be wonderful. <laughs> and you know, the the further I've gotten into it, the the more I realize that I can only write the books that I'm capable of writing. And thank goodness for that, because those books are many and they are wonderful. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, what ignited Dr. Abel's wonder for literature? It was a moment as a young boy in a thrift store with his mother holding a secondhand book in his hands. And I just remember, you know, holding holding that book, and you know, realizing that the person who wrote it was wor- worlds away from this particular moment. But I was still able to access that writer's world and thoughts and 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 ideas, and that was just so powerful to me in that moment that I really kind of fell in love with like the book as an object. And, you know, I think that's been something that sustained me as a creative person. I, I never lost that love of the book objects and then had this desire to also create my own book objects uh, with the hope that someday somebody would have a similar experience with, uh, with one of my works. It's safe to say that hope has been fulfilled. Jordan's first book, A Place of Scraps, won the Dorothy Livesey Poetry Prize. CBC named his second book, Uninhabited, a best book of 2015. His third, Injun, won Canada's most generous poetry award, the Griffin Poetry Prize. And his first creative nonfiction book, Nishka, is out now. I'm from the Nisca Nation, uh, and Nisca is spelled N-I-S-G-A apostrophe A. And the book's title is N-I-S-H-G-A um, with a pronunciation uh, Nishka. And and the one of the reasons why this word is at the center of this book is because that's the spelling that my, my dad used in his promotional business cards. So there's kind of like a a, a, a disconnect <laughs> between the way my dad spelled the name of the nation that we're from and the way that others have others have spelled it and that's to, to me that's one of the central moments in the book is un- unraveling the title nishka started with a box given to jordan by his mother filled with archival documents and photographs from his family's history the main question for me you know going into this book uh was about you know, how do I talk about intergenerational trauma in a way that I can re- relate that experience to others uh, who who may not know what that looks like for uh, Indigenous peoples um, who are survivors or intergenerational survivors of residential schools in Canada. Jordan started transcribing and arranging these materials, and he realized pretty early on that they alone couldn't tell the full story. And so he turned to academia. He used transcripts of his own talks and the works of other scholars to help fill in this complex and what he calls fractured narrative. The way that all these pieces interconnects is reflective, you know, of my 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 struggle to to grasp the story as a whole in some ways. There's there's so much pain and and trauma in it for me and and so the I think the narrative comes together in this fragmentary way in in part because you know that's the that's the best I can do to try and hold the whole thing together. Nishka was released just in time for Indigenous History Month, and Jordan hopes that his first creative nonfiction book will get into the hands of the people who need to read it. I would deeply appreciate for all the people who are interested to pass this book forward to to those who it would be useful for. I, I think my my best hope for lit- literature as a as a thing that that does things, you know, is maybe op- open a door for someone who maybe has these experiences or has had similar experiences, you know, but it's unable to put them into words. 